our God is an awesome God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's tell him that we love him this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's time yes. to worship and adore his name. Has the Lord been it good is. to anybody in this house? Has the Lord been good to anybody in this house? Hallelujah. Well, we're going to express worse. our love to him. Shower him with love tonight. Come on, lift up those hands in the sanctuary and wave them and say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I adore you. You're worthy of my worship. Hallelujah. God for his presence already meeting us here. We thank God for that. And we're about to start our morning service. Once again, thank you all for coming to our praise and worship um, part of the service. And I am going to turn this over to Pastor John. Praise God, Pastor John. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, Amen. each and every one of you, once again. And as we always say, thank God for blessing your souls for being here with us with another Mount Moriah Community Church virtual service brought to you by Zoom. Amen. And you know, as I always say, God has a word for you this morning. So don't leave your sofa without it. Amen. <laughs> and uh, as I uh, sit in this uh, bed, it's not as bad as it looks. 
<laughs> I'm going to be coming home today. I'm just waiting to get the last blood test evaluated, and I am out of here. Amen. But as I am sitting, waiting, and as you can see, I'm part of the service, and just like you are, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Habakkuk 2 and 20. Amen. Amen. Praise God for that. Good to have you with us, Pastor John. And that's all because of prayer. As I often say, prayer works. Yes, it does. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. I'm going to be coming from the hymn books this morning. And if we were in the brick and mortar, it would be on page 104. That is at the cross. Amen. So I'll give you a little moment here to set that up. And I know everyone's familiar with that um, old hymnal at the cross. Amen. Hold on for a quick moment here. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Okay, one second. Let me do this real quick. Oh, yes, Lord, you're worthy. Thank you, Jesus.
a cross for everyone. There is a cross for me. Amen. Praise God. We have just a few announcements um, this morning. Amen. First of all, just want to, before I do that, just welcome all our visitors, our uh, members, friends of Mount Moriah Community Church. Welcome all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, we are here virtually. Thank God for technology that we're still able to meet. And um, Pastor John Sheckett Jr. Um, is with us. I'm not sure if everyone knew he was or still is in the hospital, but thank God he will be coming home today. And I just want to thank God for all the prayers that have gone up for him. Amen. <laughs> This coming Tuesday at 7 p.m., our Women of Favor Ministry will be meeting. Um, and our lesson is Reflect and Prepare. Our president is our own Elder Gail Pickney. So join us, women. Women, come and join and fellowship with us. We do have a glorious time um, worshiping and praising the Lord. Amen. And that's every fourth Tuesday of the month at 7 p.m. via Zoom. So join us this Tuesday, January 24th. Amen. Amen. Bible study will resume this Wednesday, which is the uh, 25th of January at 7 p.m. via Zoom, of course. Um, if you'd like to join us, um, visit our website for the link. Amen. 7 p.m. this Wednesday for Bible study. All righty, see you there. God bless. <laughs> and once again, um, our sister church that we fellowship with, Newcastle Baptist Church uh, Ministries, will be honoring and celebrating um, Mother in Zion and truly a prayer warrior, Mother Gertrude Crawford. Um, the services um, will be um, start again this coming Saturday and end next Sunday. All the information is found on the website. So visit there if you'd like to join um, us in celebrating uh, with Newcastle, Mother Gertrude Crawford. Amen. And once again, if you want to know what the latest and greatest is going on here at Mount Moriah Community Church, please visit our website. Amen. That's www.mt. MariahCC.com. Amen. Thank you for listening and stay tuned for more. Amen. Right now, we're going to have our scripture reading by our Elder Roy Stewart. Good morning, Elder Stewart. Well, good morning, Sister Jackie, and thanks for the good news. Yes. Praise God. Praise I, report. I'll be reading to you this morning from uh, the King James Version, the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 19. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, 
some Elias and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, Bar for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind, earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven amen amen praise god praise god thank you elder roy for the reading of god's precious word this morning truly it is a blessing it's a blessing to hear his word and to read his word amen we're going to have prayer by our Elder Rhonda Sheckett. If you can unmute yourself, Elder Rhonda, amen. Praise the Lord, First Lady, give an honor to the Most High God for oh, his yes. great, great mercy and grace. Oh, yes. Oh, Father God, in the name that's high above every name. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for taking us through the three days yes, and Lord. three nights. Thank you for personally for being my bread and my water. Thank you, oh, Father God, for our prayer list. Yes. Thank you, Father God, for answering prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father God, we thank and wholeheartedly. We just can't magnify you enough just for being God. Oh, we can't praise you enough, Lord. We can't praise you enough, Lord. We can't praise and thank you enough for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. How you love us so. Thank you for Zoom. Thank you for Mount Mariah and what you're doing with and for us. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Jesus. Lord, we thank and praise you for the prayer warriors. Every prayer that has gone up, oh, Father God, thank you for the one accord. Thank you, Father God, for the one accord. Oh, Father God, and putting us all together and keeping us all together and blessing us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, Father God, continue to, oh, Father God, to discern to, Lord, the doctors and the nurses in behalf of Pastor John, oh, Father God, concerning the situation, oh, Father God, discern to them how to keep the food inside of them in Jesus name. You are a miracle worker. You, are. you know how to discern, oh Father God, discern yeah. to them what to do to help your child, oh Father God. And thank you for bringing him through. Thank you for what you're doing with, oh Father God, our overseer Letty Parks concerning, oh Father God, this that has happened with Mount Moriah, the brick and mortar, continue to manifest your miracle working grace and mercy and power oh father god have your way in jesus name continue to bless the service now in jesus name amen 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 yes he is a way maker miracle worker yes keeper amen yes he is yes he is jesus praise god for whom all blessings flow Amen. Yes. We're going to go into the bread, the meat and potatoes of our service. Amen. Amen. I am going to play a song before we um, um, pre present our speaker of the hour, which is our elder Lamario Pickney. Amen. 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 Let me just well, give me a second here before I before he comes up and we do have a song. Amen. Hold on. Now. Praise it's God. It's worthy of the praise. Yes, he is. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, send your anointing, Lord. Send your unction, Lord. Send your power, yes, Lord. Lord. Your freaking power. Jesus' name. 
Sis, the sound is gone. And I was, um, uh, did you hear most of the song? 
Yes. Okay, good. All right. Amen. I'm going to turn this over to our speaker of the hour, um, Elder Lamario Pickney. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Good morning, Mount Moriah. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I just want to say that we are pleased and thankful to God for answered prayers for Pastor John, that he'll be coming home this afternoon and the three-day fast, for getting us through the three-day fast and for continuing to, to be in our midst. God is doing a whole lot for Mount Moriah. Amen. And week after week after week, we continue to, to grow and be blessed by the word that God brings forth and shares with us. Amen. This morning, our message is seeing in the spirit. And this is where we see our situation and even experience our situation. But through it all, the Holy Spirit intervenes and allow us to envision what's going on in the supernatural what's going on behind the scenes Amen. and God is taking me down this path and taking us down this path for a reason so let's go before the Lord in prayer amen dear father God Lord God we just thank you for demonstrating your love by giving us your only son Jesus Christ for we know that there's power in the name, there's deliverance in the name, there's healing in the name, there's salvation in the name of Jesus. And because of your sacrifice, Jesus, we're now called sons and joint heirs. But Lord, I'm thankful you chose a wretch like me and my best and our best righteous act is, is no more than filthy rags. But Lord, we're thankful that as we take our backward glances, we can see where you brought us from and what you've done for us. And Lord, we're thankful that you saw the potential and the promise in us that you continue to speak life into our spirit while you position us for our purpose here on earth. Now we know hard times will come and the devil's busy, but we won't lose sight Father God of you, for you've already given us your message that greatness lives in each one of us. And for this reason, we are to never, never, never give up. So Lord, our testimony this morning as, as we led by your spirit is to move forward in peace, in your peace, like a river. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now, Amen. If you don't, if you don't have your Bible, you may want to grab your sword, your weapon, uh, because we will be using God's word this morning as a lamp for our feet and a light on our path so we can see the devil flee. Amen. Amen. Again, our message this morning is seeing in the spirit, which would indicate that our natural eyes will miss or won't be able to see the things of the spirit like we see things in the natural. We hear people say all the time that he is or she is or we are or we should be walking in the spirit. And uh, this is true for the most part. And in Paul's letter to the Galatians, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 and 17, he says this, This I say, then walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. For the flesh lusteth or wars against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary 
the one to the other, so that ye do not do the things that ye would. And then he says, cannot do the things that ye would, I'm sorry. Then he says in verse 25, if ye live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Now, you know, we ask ourselves, you know, we say, well, how can I walk in the spirit? I mean, I see Mother Letty. Um, can I walk in the spirit like Sister Cynthia or like Sister Blunt? Or even my brother John John or First Lady Sheckett. I mean, they make it look easy. But I'm not sure. But I'm sure Elder Roy or Elder Rhonda would tell us that to walk in the spirit is a daily walk which requires us to be in touch with and be aware of the Holy Spirit. It's the spiritual maturity process that we all have to go through and be committed to endure to the point where we question everything around us. But through it all, we find comfort in the voice of God that we recognize, in the voice that will bring us the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The voice that speaks love and joy and peace, patience or long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control beyond understanding. But remember, to whom much is given, much is required. And again, in Paul's letter to the Christians in Corinth, he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 9 through 12 he says but as it is written what no eyes has seen nor ear heard nor the heart of man imagined what God has prepared for those who love him now verse 10 says pay attention to this these things God has revealed to us through the spirit for the spirit searches everything even the depths of God. Verse 11, for who knows a person's thought except the spirit of that person which is in him? Now in my Bible, there's a question mark behind there. I'm not sure if it's in your Bible, but that question mark leads us to believe that maybe there's not the spirit of God in everyone because it's either the Holy Spirit or an evil spirit operating in each one of us. So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given to us by God. Now, we're going somewhere with this, so, so stay with me. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is one involving the prophet Elijah in 2 Kings. Now, I want you to turn with me to the book of 2 Kings, because I want us to really kind of go through this one together. And as you, as you turn with me to the book of 2 Kings, uh, the address is located in the Old Testament near the front of the book. We're going to drive past Genesis, past <laughs> Exodus, past Deuteronomy, and slow down a little bit when you start to get to Judges. Now you're going to see 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel. Now the next house will be 1 Kings. And second kings live next door. Now say amen when you found the house. Amen. 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 Now Elijah was the prophet who served with Elijah in Israel and asked God to bless him with a double portion of Elijah's spirit. And then after Elijah was taken directly into heaven by a chariot of fire, 
Elijah picked up Elijah's mantle. Amen. So this is Elijah. Now, just a little background about what's taking place here in, in 2 Kings. We're going to look at chapter 6, verses 14, and we may get through 23. Second Kings chapter six, verse 14. Now what's going on here is that the king of Syria was at war with Israel. And the king was disturbed that the prophet Elijah was able to predict where his army was planning to go and warning Israel's king that Israel's army could devise a strategy against the army of Syria. So the word on the street was that Elijah was dwelling in the town of Dotham. So the king of Syria decided that he would send a large group of soldiers in the middle of the night to surround the city of Dotham and capture Elijah so that he wouldn't be able to help Israel win. And being surrounded by the large army, there was no escape. And Elijah's servant is terrified. And all he could see is the Syrian army that is there to capture Elijah. But in reality, he saw no way out. And honestly, there, there are many times we find ourselves in this position where it appears to be no answer right now. So let's read 2 Kings chapter 6, beginning at verse 14. And we can see what happens in the rest of the story. And it reads, so he, the king of Syria, sent their horses and chariots and a great army, and they came by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the man of God rose early in the morning and went out, behold, an army with horses and chariots were all around the city. And the servant says, alas. In other words, what? Let's go. <laughs> My master, what shall we do? And Elijah said, do not be afraid for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Then Elijah prayed and said, oh, Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. Amen. So the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold. The mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. And when the Syrians came down against him, Elijah prayed to the Lord and said, please strike this people with blindness. So he struck them with blindness in accordance with the prayer of Elijah. And Elijah said to them, this is not the way. This is not the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. And he led them to Samaria. As soon as they entered Samaria, Elijah said, O oh Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. So the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. As soon as the king of Israel saw them, he said to Elijah, My father, shall I strike them down? Shall I strike them down? And he answered, you shall not strike them down. Would you strike down those whom you have taken captive with your sword and with your bow? Set bread and water before them that they may eat and drink and go to their master. Now, this is an entirely different type of warfare that God is fighting with Elijah. This is not your conventional type of war. Verse 23, so he prepared for them a great feast. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away and they went to their master and the Syrians did not come again on raids into the land of Israel. Amazing how God handled that. But first of all, Elijah could see that the battle was already won. 
And he calmed, to, he calmed the fear of his servant by saying, do not fear. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. But when Elijah prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. The Lord opened the servant's eye so he could see in the spirit and recognize that this is how spiritual warfare is fought. Then the servant saw the hills and the mountains full of angels on horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. But the key to this battle is that Elijah's prayers ushered in the heavenly army for protection. He wasn't moved by what he saw in the natural because he could see in the spirit that things were happening supernaturally in the heavenly realm. And Elijah was a seasoned veteran. And by staying connected to the Holy Spirit, it allowed Elijah to see, hear, and move with the Spirit in his daily walk. Because the fervent prayers of the righteous avail us much. And you see, this is why we have prayer warriors. This is why we fast and pray. This is how we know that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And this is how we become overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony or through the words of our prayers. When we stay connected to the power source, the Holy Spirit, he will lead and guide us. And this is why Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, while we look not at things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal or everlasting. Now, let's look at our scriptures, which was eloquently read by Elder Roy, the voice of Mount Moriah. Amen. Matthew 16, verses 13 through 19. Up to this point, I believe God is trying to show us that there's always going to be things going on around us. There's always going to be things that's going to look one way, appear one way. We may be involved in something that we have no answer. We can't see our way out. But in the supernatural, in the heavenlies, through our prayers, through our fasting, that's when spiritual warfare is fought. That's how we make things happen on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Let's look at Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 through 19. Now, at this point, Jesus is approaching the end of his ministry. Of his ministry and he spent almost three years with his disciples teaching them healing people de demonstrating miracles etc and then he comes to Caesarea and it reads when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi he asked his disciples saying who do men say that I the son of man am and they said, some say that thou art the Baptist, or John the Baptist, some say Elijah, some say Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. So he saith unto them, but whom say thee, whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon Bajono, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. In other words, Peter was blessed because he was the only one that got it right. And although he could see Jesus with his natural eyes, he, he saw the reality of everything he had witnessed during his time with Jesus as the work of God and not the work of just a natural man. And the Father, through the Holy Spirit, spoke to Peter in a quiet voice to reveal the truth. 
of who Jesus really and truly is. And God allowed Peter to see beyond the natural into the spirit and know that Jesus is the son of the living God. Then in verse 18, Jesus says, and I say unto thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it or upon this truth that I am the Christ, the son of the living God, I will build my church. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, this is a very important, crucial scripture for us who are involved in spiritual warfare on a regular basis. But we know that the devil's busy, and we know that we war not against flesh and blood. It, it appears to be our theme for this year of us continuing to be reminded that we're in spiritual warfare. And in verse 19, Jesus was always teaching and preaching uh, and preparing his disciples to, to be like him and to understand the power that they will have in heaven and on earth as they follow his teachings and are filled, led, and can hear from the Holy Spirit. The teachings of Jesus and being led by the Holy Spirit are the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And therefore, when we bind the devil on earth, the Holy Spirit will bind him in heaven. And when we loose the spirit of healing or, the, or we loose the fruit of the spirit on earth, it is released from heaven. Amen. And this is, this is the, the thing that we need to always continue to be reminded and remember that we never war against flesh and blood. We can't be moved by the things that, that we see in front of us or the situations that we're involved in because spiritual warfare is fought through prayer, through fasting, and through hearing and being able to move with the Holy Spirit. And that's how we make things happen. That's how we change things here on earth as it is in heaven. Hmm. Now, in Matthew's chapter 17, as I close out, Matthew 17, Jesus wanted to show his disciples one more thing to give them one more understanding of the significance of him being with them and the significance of him being here on earth. And in verse 17, chapter 17, verse 1, it's chapter 17, verse 1, Jesus says, well, the word says, after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain. And he was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his remnant was white as light. Now, the transfiguration of Jesus is a powerful demonstration of his divine glory, which he possessed prior to coming to earth in the human form or in his human body. And Jesus has changed from a natural man into the way we will see him in heaven again. The Holy Spirit allows Peter, James, and John to see into the spirit realm that Jesus, the Messiah, and his kingdom has come to earth. And they also see Moses and Elijah speaking with Jesus during the transfiguration. And in verse 3, it says, Behold, there appears to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Now, Jesus is joined by Moses, the lawgiver, 
and Elijah, the law enforcer. And they appear together beside Jesus, which symbolizes that Jesus has come and has fulfilled the law and fulfilled all prophecies. And now Jesus is bringing the new covenant from God for all the people, which is salvation. And you know, in, in John chapter three, verse 16, we, we know this one by heart, where it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But it also says in verse 17, for God sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And this morning, you know, there may be someone out there who wants to know the Lord as their own personal savior. And you may not be sure where you will spend eternity. And maybe you question whether there's a, a heaven or a hell. But there's only one way I know in order for you to find out for sure. And when that happens and you realize that it is real, there's no coming back. So if you're this person and you're not sure where you may spend your eternity and you want to have Jesus in your life as your own personal savior. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse nine and 10, that if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and savior, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you confess this with your mouth that Jesus is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, you shall be saved. So if you will, wherever you may be, in your home or in your car, you can pray this prayer with me. If you will pray, Father, Father God, Lord, I accept you. I accept you, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you were raised from the dead for my sins. And I confess right now that you are my Lord of Lord and my King of Kings. And the Bible tells us that if you pray that prayer, you shall be saved. And this is, this is what Jesus has come for. This is why Jesus came to earth. This is our mission at Mount Moriah. This is our mission, each and every saint, each and every one of us. This is what we've been called to do. Amen. We've been called to to hear, have an ear, to hear what the Lord has, is saying to the church. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Don't be moved by what you see. Just know that through your prayers, through your fasting, things are moving, things are happening in the supernatural. And Father, God, love, we just thank you right now. We thank you for being in our presence. We thank you for being in our midst. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for your message. And Lord, we just thank you for answered prayers. Lord, we just thank you for the faithful saints, Father God, that continue to be obedient to your word. And Lord, we understand that obedience is greater than sacrifice. And Lord, we just thank you for the obedience that you've given us. And Lord, we just pray right now as we move forward throughout this week and as we conclude our service, 
We just give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. 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 Thank you, Elder Mel, for that wonderful message. Amen. Blessing us today with what God imparted unto you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And as we offer up our benediction for today, we thank the Lord for leading each of you to join us today. And we just pray that you've been blessed and that you have received and that you have taken the word of God and imparted it into your hearts. Now, Lord, as we leave this place, not your presence, but leave this place, we just pray, Lord, that you would continue to be with us Continue, Lord, to bless us with our daily needs. That you will keep us safe, healthy, strong, courageous. In the name of Jesus, in this coming week, Lord, we just pray that you will continue to bless us with all your heavenly gifts. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank God for, once again, the word of God and all that took place um, today and giving honor to God who is worthy of all our praise. Thank you, Elder Mel, for a rich word, a rich, powerful word to God be the glory. And we want to thank all of um, our members, our friends our family for joining us today and continue to be blessed. Take the word of God with you, the rich word of God. Let it minister to throughout the day, I pray. And as well, read God's word. I can't say that enough. Read it. Read it. It is our sword. It is our weapon. So read it, saints. We are living in the last days. We need to pick that sword up and don't put it down. But truly, God hears our prayers and he's able to do all things. Put on those spiritual eyeglasses. See what God sees today. Amen. And you will be blessed. Amen. Join us for after service fellowship if you just so desire and prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for once again, what he's doing here at Mount Moriah. And we bless you and thank you for coming and supporting us each and every Sunday. Amen. Have a blessed day. Amen. Have a blessed day. Amen. Amen. Amen.